Hello everyone and welcome back to the good stuff. We are continuing the Paul Morphy saga uh, and we are currently uh, going to start the match uh, Paul Charles Morphy versus uh, Johan Jakob Lowenthal. Uh, we already had one match between the two of them but that was the 1850 match and this is their 1858 match in London uh, while Morphy is still waiting to face uh, the, uh, the dungeon master that is uh, Howard Staunton. Now here is uh, only one, uh, one very short um, uh, clip, not clip, one very, very short clip. Um, well, paragraph I would like to read from David Lawson's book regarding this match. But before that, here we have a nice image of this match. There you have it. Uh, we've already shown this photo in their 1850 match, but we said that this is actually from the, their 1858 match in London that, that we are going to cover. So here it is. Let's just enjoy that for a moment. You can see, you can see by uh, Lowenthal's, uh, you know, uh, poise that he is uh, he considers himself Morphe's superior, or maybe he's just trying to project confidence. It's uh, it's hard to say. Uh, but w uh, you'll see what happens in the game. So this is game two of their match, uh, and the game one ended in a draw. It was a very, it was a very nice game, uh, a very equalish positional game. Uh, Morphe went for the field or defense, and uh, you know the, the game ended in a draw, like we said. Uh, but this is the part I wanted to read to you guys. It's very short, so uh, so no worries. Uh, let me just uh, improve on this. So uh, regarding uh, this is from. Uh, from Leventhal's uh, uh, column uh, th that he's writing, it's uh, it's called uh, uh, the Era. Uh, it's uh, being published in London. So on the July 18th, uh, he says, uh, "We last week uh, informed our readers that a match uh, at chess was in course of arrangement between the American champion Mr. Paul Morphy and Herr Leventhal. Uh, the arrangements have been brought to a most satisfactory conclusion, and the match will be duly commenced uh, on Monday, next July 19th. The winner of the first nine games is to be the victor. Uh, the stake is 100 pounds a side, and the play is to take place on four days each week." Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. One game will be played uh, at each sitting unless adjourned by mutual consent. Uh, half the games to be played at the St. George's uh, Chess Club and half at the London Chess Club. The games are to be exclusively the property of the players. Uh, the second uh, of Mr. Morphy Ah, the seconds of Mr. Morphy are Lord Arthur Hay and uh, Reverend John Owen, and those of Mr. Lowenthal are uh, Messrs. Uh, Barnes, uh, I believe that's like M M Monsignor Barnes, or maybe not, I don't know, not really familiar with this word, word could be Monsignor Barnes, uh, and uh, Old Ham. Uh, Mr. Staunton has been named um, the umpire, uh, that's the, the, like the, the referee or the judge, and Mr. Lewis, the stakeholder, who will be uh, making sure that you know nothing happens to the money uh, before the end of the match. And the stipulations uh, in this match are exceedingly simple uh, and fair for both parties. They are as follows. The winner of the first nine games shall be entitled to the stakes. Uh, the first move shall be decided by a uh, lot uh, in the first game and shall subsequently belong to each player alternately. Drawn games not, uh, notwithstanding. One half of the games shall be played at St. George, like we said, in the other half at, at the London Chess Club. Uh, the play shall take place on the following days. We already covered that. Uh, each uh, Either party failing to appear within half an hour of the appointed time shall incur... Uh, a penalty of one pound, one shilling. If you're late for an hour, then two pounds, two shillings. If you're late for an hour and a half, then five pounds, five shillings. Uh, uh, the fines in each case payable to the op opposite party. No game shall be protracted beyond one sitting unless adjourned by mutual consent. And uh, uh, point seven, after five hours... Uh, of play, either party shall be at liberty to demand an adjournment for an hour, and the games shall be the joint property of the player. So this is all in writing, uh, and uh, here, okay, we, we, we could read on, but we're not going to. Uh, basically, what it says is that uh, the, the players did not agree, will there be like a time limit for one move? Is there like, can you think for 20 minutes for one move, 30 or, or something? Uh, but in uh, for this match, you can think for as, as long as you want. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, you know, go going to be a problem for Morphe, as Morphe pretty much plays instantly, and he really hates it when his opponents, uh, you know, w wait to play moves. So this is the, like I said, the second game of the match, and Lowenthal really jumped at the opportunity to challenge Morphe again, as he's really... Uh, well, he has to wash down the shame of losing to 12-year-old Morphy back in 1850, and now that Morphy came here to London, he has no choice but to challenge him and to, you know, restore his honor. 
and uh, his logic, uh, logic is now, uh, okay, maybe I've lost to Morphe at 12 years of age, but I'm definitely not going to lose at Morphe when, now that he's almost 20 years of age. Uh, but as, uh, you know, players say, as uh, also Howard Staunton said, that uh, his game improved vastly uh, since those days, uh, talking about Lowenthal. So let's check out the game. We're not going to talk this much uh, before every game. This is just because this is now the, the start of the match. So let's check it out. Morphe with the white pieces opens with e4. We have e5 and now f4. Morphe goes for the king's gambit. We have bishop to c5. Uh, going for the, uh, just uh, a nice developing move. Declining the gambit and the knight to f3. We have d6 now uh, defending on e5. Uh, and here we have a c3. Not interested in going for the king's events right away, uh, but rather first c3, preparing ideas like b4 and d4. We have bishop to g4 by Lowenthal and now bishop to c4. Already uh, allowing black to make some mistakes, for example, if you just uh, think nothing is happening and continue development, let's say knight f6, then f captures an e5 already uh, pressures black into giving up the light square bishop, because if you go for something like captures, then you run into bishop captures on f7 and it's already a problem. If you capture, then knight captures with check, picks up the bishop. If you don't, let's say something like this, you move the bishop, and now of course white's position is much better. So you have to be careful in positions like these. So bishop captures on f3, Lowenthal uh, gets rid of the bishop right away, uh, we have queen captures and now knight to f6, uh, continuing development and now preparing the castle. Morphe now starts pushing on the queen side, we have b4, bishop to b6 and now d3. Uh, we have knight b to d7, Lowenthal continues uh, developing and now f5. Morphe showing very little respect to Lowenthal, uh, overly expanding on the king's side and uh, of course Lowenthal will make uh, use of this uh, later on by striking in the center, which is how you want to treat the position. Uh, when your opponent overextends on, on one side of the board. You should strike in the center. So, queen to e7, saying that, okay, I might castle king side, I might castle queen side. Uh, you, you play your game. So, g4, Morphe preparing g5, so h6, stopping this, and now king to e2 by Morphe. Morphe playing on both sides of the board, he's saying, I'm not going to castle, my king will be very safe on e2. Uh, we have c6 by Lowenthal. Uh, preparing d5 now and g5 by Morphe. We have h captures, bishop captures, and only now d5, striking in the center. Uh, we have bishop back to b3, and now queen to d6. d4 is extremely strong here for black because it really puts pressure on the b4 pawn, uh, so white isn't really at liberty to capture on d4, and if you just defend with a3, then a5 and the black is breaking through somewhere. So this would be one way to go. The other way is the way uh, that Lowenthal chose, queen to d6 first. Uh, we have knight to d2, Morphe continues developing, and now a5, preparing to open up the a file for the rook. So Morphe captures on a5, we have rook captures on a5, and now h4. Morphe starts pushing on the king's side now. We have knight to h5, an excellent move by Lowenthal, uh, trying to exploit... Uh, uh, the, the f4 square somehow for the moment uh, if, you, if you play it uh, white will just capture it but it could be become uh, useful in the future so knight to f1 morphe needs to remaneuver the the knight a little bit and now knight to c5 putting pressure on the bishop here uh, and here bishop to c2 by morphe so here you can feel that morphe's position is a bit shaky and that uh, there should be something in the position and in fact there is the position is completely winning for lowenthal uh, so feel free to pause the video here and uh, win the game for Lowenthal while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, as it's uh, really not uh, the, the simplest move to find. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's actually Rook to A3. Uh, not maybe the first move that comes to mind, but the point is you cannot defend the c3 pawn, and once that uh, gets eliminated, then the attack is just happening, and it's unstoppable. Point is that it's extremely hard to, to defend. For example, if king to d2 just decaptures on e4, and uh, white will not be able to capture with the pawn. Uh, and here comes uh, the, the main thing, uh, uh, why this knight on h5 is so great, because now uh, the bishop cannot be used to guard both the f4 square and the c3 pawn. For example, if you try it with bishop to d2, then you get knight to f4 check. 
and now okay okay if you if you eliminated it then you uh, the c3 pawn is no longer defended uh, or if you go king to e1 then you get bishop to a5 piling up on this uh, a3 pawn d4 uh, the queen and the bishop now defended but now everything works for black you can even play moves like rook captures on c3 which is really really awesome bishop captures you could play d captures on e4 now with a tempo on the queen bishop captures and now you can play bishop captures on c3 with check queen captures and now knight captures on e4 and now uh, okay white is up the exchange but with the two knights so close to the white king white king still being in the center of the board you don't really have a good move here uh, you have to give up this pawn as well N none of the squares are here available for the queen to defend it and of course if queen to b2 then just knight e3 check uh, and morphe loses the queen so rook to a3 would have been an extremely strong move here However, uh, first, uh, uh, Loventhal prepares it with rook to b5. He wants to go after the bishop this way instead of uh, instead of rook a3 to c3. So he wants to play uh, rook to b2 now, but Morphe stops it. He plays bishop to c1. And now we have d captures on e4. Now uh, Morphe is again trying to control both b2 and f4 with the bishop. So knight f4 is always an option for Loventhal. However, he first goes for d captures on e4. We have d captures on e4. And now, again, the theme of knight f4 just trying to, uh, you know, over overthrow the, the, the bishop here. Uh, but uh, here, uh, Loventhal goes for something else. And before I show you this move, even though it's in the thumbnail, uh, we are going to give Loventhal the barn's head for this move as it really, really needs it. So here, Loventhal plays rook to b2 instead. Uh, it's it's a very nice idea trying to trying to really create this beautiful f4 outpost for the knight uh, but morphe doesn't really have any other choices he has to capture the rook so bishop captures and now knight the f4 check and now morphe has to be very careful the queen controls these squares the bishop controls these two squares so uh, the only square well uh, you don't want to go uh, here uh, on this diagonal and face some nasty discoveries so basically king to e1 is your only option so this is what morphe plays and now knight c to d3 with check connecting the fork with the bishop and b2 so uh I almost said Barnes, Lowenthal is regaining some material. So Bishop captures, the other knight captures with check. We have King D2, uh, again going in front of some nasty discoveries, but uh, if you don't want to... Uh, well, uh, there are a couple of uh, options you could try, but none of them really work. You really have to go after the bishop. So here we have knight captures on b2. We have king to c2 and now queen to a3, defending that knight. Knight to c4 was uh, was maybe a bit better, but uh, uh, Loventhal really wants to, to finish this attack, but there really is no way of finishing the attack because the attack doesn't really exist, uh, hence the barn's head. So here, uh, queen to a3 defending the knight and morphe just sets a nice little trap here morphe plays knight to d2 uh, and here uh there really isn't all that that much you can try because now the the c4 square is covered you cannot play c4 what you could play is knight to a4 but uh uh of course loventhal uh didn't uh, didn't think of that he played bishop to c7 uh probably to you know preemptively defend the e5 pawn but here morphe just wins on the spot so feel free to pause the video and win the game on the spot for morphe while i give you a couple of seconds so uh, for those of you who were able to do it congratulations on spotting a move with the knight back and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show it's knight to b1 and after morphe played this knight to b1 move uh, loventhal resigned and uh, well of course there is nothing more to be done here so here the queen is under attack if you move the queen you lose the knight and that's it there's there's no way to, to play for anything here there are no tricks uh, any queen to a4 check is met by king captures on b2 and there's no way to continue the attack morphe is now up a full rook and of course black has black has nothing here yeah you don't even have a useful check if you play something like queen b5 check the king just moves and there's no way to continue checking white will just continue developing and well black black really has nothing so yeah, after knight to b1, uh, Loventhal resigned and Morphe takes the lead in this match uh, that will be first to nine. So like, as, uh, like uh, in the previous match, we're not going to show all the games, but we are going to show the, the more interesting ones uh, as that's why we're doing the saga. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game against uh, Johan Jakob Loventhal. Not on the greatest path to exact his revenge, but you know the, the match is still young. We'll see what happens. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Frank Combs, uh, Nick Blackwell, Wes Allendale, Gokul G, and Sarah Jones Larson for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. 
As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the good stuff, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all, I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.